From Viking invasions to Roman occupation, from countryside to coast, from historic wars between the English and the Scots to modern warfare, from a Scottish queen to a gypsy queen, from an artist from Manchester who regularly painted here to a local heroine who became a national icon, to boots discarded from weary walkers, from churches and abbeys to the ruins of priories and stunning scenery on the way. Join us over the next few weeks as we follow the route of the stunning Northumberland 250. Day two of our travels around the Northumberland 250. And it was a most excellent park up for the night. Just there, very quiet road. Last car we heard was about 8.30 last night. And then we went to bed and we were asleep. Got up at three o'clock this morning just to let the dogs out for a wee. Went back to bed. The heater's on because it was a bit chilly when we woke up, but that's where we are. £25 going into the wallet, plus the £5 left over from yesterday, it means we've actually got £30 to spend today. Don't tell Keith, but I will let us spend more. Although we're following a route, the Northumberland 250, we are going to veer off the route slightly, and that's what we're doing just now. We've come into Hexham for a look around, and for some breakfast. Um, it's a town with a lot of history, which we're going to tell you about, because that's what we do. It's a lovely, bright, sunny day. Just over there, you've got the Moot Hall. We'll have a wander around after we've had breakfast. We've got this place to have a look at as well. Yes, it's a Weatherspoons breakfast, and we know it's not supporting local businesses, but we do like the history, as we've said before, of where Weatherspoons set up their businesses. And this is an old cinema, the Forum, in Hexham. And Weatherspoons do do a good breakfast. So that's the Forum, now Weatherspoons, still is a cinema upstairs. And are you going to say it, or am I? What? That a canny breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very nice breakfast, as usual. You know what you're getting with the uh, weather spoons. You do, yeah. I say it's not supporting local, is it? But but we still paid by cash. We did. So the Forest Cinema was built in 1937 to replace an earlier cinema called the Gem. And originally it was going to be called something else, but they decided on the Forum to represent the local Roman history of the area. Right. So Hexham's a border town, and like many other towns on the borders, it suffered in the wars between Scotland and England. And in 1297, William Wallace burnt the town. And then in 1312, Robert the Bruce, King of Scotland, demanded and received 2,000 pounds to stop him doing the same. A lot of money in those days. It was. Look at that uh, roof there, or the yeah. spider thing. Don't know how you describe that. No, I don't either. <coughs> it's 
So this is the Moot Hall, is it? This is the Moot Hall. There's a, a bit of information over here. So this was the gatehouse guard, which guarded the hall of the Arch Archbishops of York. They were lords of the manor of Hexham for nearly 500 years until 1545. Well, that'd be the um abolition of the monasteries wasn't yeah it? this late medieval tower was heavily fortified with three sets of doors overhanging parapets and murder holes what's a murder hole no idea in the first floor courtroom the archbishop's bailiff administers justice This is the old jail. It was one of the first purpose-built jails in England, built between 1330 and 1333. And I didn't know that William Wallace was known as the Guardian of Scotland. No. This church was built over the ruins of St Wilfrid's Church in the 12th century. It's an old building. It was part of a priory surrounded by a high stone wall People gathered outside the wall to sell their goods and local produce. And markets have been held here ever since. And this here is known as the historic heart of Hexham. The town's story begins when Bishop Wilfred built a great church here in the 670s. A rich and varied history here. Hexham Priory became a cathedral in 681. In 875, Viking raiders destroyed parts of Hexham Monastery. In 1296, Scottish raiders set fire to the Priory, destroying shrines, books, and relics. And as I say, in 1297, William Wallace, Braveheart, carried out another Scottish raid and attacked the Priory again destroying what remained after the 1296 raid. 1346, the Priory sacked in another Scottish raid. raid. And in 1404, the Priory received its first six bells. What an amazing history, hey? Come around the other side now. It's a plaque to the Royal Northumberland Fusiliers, 4th Battalion and the 8th Battalion. And this garden's dedicated to the memory of all those of the above battalions who gave their lives in the World War of 1939-45. <coughs> And from here you can really see how vast it is here. Hexham Ab Hexham oh, that's difficult to say. Hexham Abbey. Hexham Abbey.
This is intricate, isn't it? It looks like, I don't know, whether this was inside at some point. And these are the stalls. I don't know. Cafe. I don't really need anything yet. Yes, you heard that right. We don't need a coffee yet. It's a nice area, isn't it? It is. And in the sun, there's still a bit of warmth. War of the Roses, there was the Battle of Hexham in 1464. The Lancastrians were defeated, fortunately. Oh, is that swearing for it you? Is. It is. <laughs> and the defeated commander, Beaufort, was executed in the Market Square. And the final part we want to show you in Hexham, before we move on, is just over here, back towards the Moot Hall. It's a lovely town, isn't it? Seventeen sixty-one, the Hexham riot took place. About 50 people were killed during the violent protest against conscription to the county's militia. They, they were protesting about the change of the rules or something, weren't they? Yeah, um, about being conscripted. Um. Changes to the criteria for serving in the militia. And so they were fired upon by troops from the North Yorkshire militia and 45 or about 50 people were killed. You see on the bench in the corner, oh, it's just moved, we're just about to take a photograph of it. It was posing nicely on the bench, a lovely little robin. From this history, through to the 1700s, we're now going all Roman on you. It's Sunday. We didn't go into the Abbey, did we? No. We've it's done that trip before, haven't we? If you've joined us on the channel since we did our Scotland trip on the NC500 some five, maybe six years ago now, I don't know you'll know that we got trapped in Doorknock Cathedral, didn't we Keith? We did. <laughs> what happened? Well, we, we went in to just have a look, quick look round and we were greeted on the door. Would we like large print or small print? And we ended up staying for the service, didn't we? We got uh, <laughs> box, hemmed in as well, didn't we? In, yeah. <laughs> we thought, we'll, we'll be at the back and we'll just sneak out in the first inn, but no. <laughs> well and truly there for the service. Very great gate house. St Wilfrid's Gateway. Part of the uh, St Wilfrid's Great Cathedral. It was destroyed by the Danes in 821 was built by the Austin Canons, who completed the Priory Church in 1114 to 1140. So it took quite a while to build and has a Norman trend. The gatehouse had an upper story used as the Prior's residence. An almonry. Yeah, I'm all almondry. What's that? Like the almshouse. Oh, right, okay. Stood beside it here. 
and the Hexen Canons, long noted for hospitality, used to care for the pilgrims and the poor. I know, I know, we promised you the Romans. It's coming. We just keep seeing other things. <laughs> 